Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Sophie. In case you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. So this is part two of my Young, Famous and African uh, series review. In case you missed out on part one, you can always watch it because um, it's the last video I posted before this one, obviously. I feel like I'm a little late in posting these reviews because people started posting reviews immediately. I watched the series on 19th. It premiered on 18th. But then, because I didn't have enough time to film and edit during the first week, I figured I'd just do it over the weekend so that it goes live on this week. This is like the second week of it streaming on Netflix. It's a show that you should definitely not miss out on. But the reason why I'm doing this intro first of all is just to explain that in the video you will notice um there won't be any there won't be headroom and that's because i filmed for a whole one and a half hours and then when i took my phone from the phone holder i realized my phone holder had actually gotten spoiled it loosened and it dropped my phone so this part of my head going upwards is going to be missing in the you know the rest of the video but uh i feel like that does not affect the review in any way so please bear with me i do know how to use my um ring lights <laughs> it's just that i had that technological mishap and there's no way i was going to repeat a video that I filmed for over one and a half hours and uh, I split it into two part one of course like I mentioned and part two so uh, I will you know take you right to the video but before I go there let me just say Zari was my favorite amongst all those women and for obvious reasons I'll be telling you the things that she did there that were my favorites uh, when I'm discussing different scenes in the series but let me just mention one that I realized I actually forgot to speak about when Annie Idibia Annie told Zari that uh, she couldn't go to her wedding and Zari told her and it is well. She's like, whether or not I attend your wedding, nothing rises or reduces within me. And when she said that, I was just like, hey, hey, hey. yes, yes, that is how you treat it. I like, I need to remember that line in certain situations that I'm likely to face in life because that was a good line. And the way she said, you know, this is just Annie's wedding. It is not Princess Diana's. It is not Jay-Z or Beyonce. I am Zari the boss lady. My attending your wedding is value to you, not the opposite. That is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite scenes in this entire series. But I'll be talking a lot more about, you know, other scenes. So please bear with me. Stick around. Watch the review. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me here or there? But don't attack me because all my opinions are based on the series, on what I watched. I don't know any of these people personally. So if you do, that's good for you, but I don't. So I'll just base it on what I have actually watched. And let me also tell you that as I was watching the series, I just couldn't help but, uh, but feel like there's something missing and i kept wondering why didn't they cast akode in this series because akode would have made those women sweat like she would have made those women so terrified that the makeup on their faces would have just you know fallen or melted because they were attacking zari for nothing for the most part except for kaylee who was a sweetheart i'll talk about all of them later but uh, i felt like akode's presence would have made this entire series like different it should have changed the dynamic completely and i feel like she would have really really taught them a lesson and taken zari's side um of course i explained that in part one i also mentioned embare and huda and explained why in part one of this um review but for now i don't want to speak too much i just want to go straight into the video and before that let me just say those women they really need to look at their wigs also because let's just go straight into the video like share and subscribe if you can um sharing is caring and leave me a comment on what you think of the review now let's go to the women because i've spoken enough about the men let's go to the women the women are kanimbao nadia nakai zari the boss lady um kaylee schwak or so i don't know how i don't know how to pronounce her second name let me just call her kaylee and then there's also annie of course annie dibia i kind of felt like zari rend this entire show like hands down she carried the show on her back but let's start with um nadia let's start with nadia because i've mentioned her quite a number of times i feel like uh her hatred towards zari started when diamond invited zari to arab night first of all like i said zari was stunning on that night and even i who was watching was stunned by how beautiful she looks the women were just there looking at her like oh my god you just look absolutely gorgeous but you see diamond had been trying to pursue nadia and in as much as she kept saying no 
women sometimes like that kind of attention and i feel like i strongly feel like she started liking diamond it's too evident when you don't want something you say a complete no very quickly but she kept encouraging him to pursue her and i think she was enjoying it so much so that when zari got into the picture all of Diamond's attention completely shifted. And this is why Diamond was saying, do not spit your chilling gums just because somebody gave you a piece of grape. And in this case, Nadia was the grape and then Zari was the chilling gum. When Zari got to that party, um, they both forgot, Diamond and Zari forgot that uh, every, there were some people around. This guy's hard to you know, clap to call their attention back to the entire thing. And this entire time, Diamond never spoke to Nadia, not even once. And I think she felt very small at that moment and she couldn't help but feel a certain way towards Zari. And you know, it's even worse because she is stunning. And you know, Nadia, I, I'm really sorry to say this, but a lot of the women in that show need to fix their wigs and to be more precise, Nadia. Nadia had terrible hair. It looked like, um, it looked like Sisal. I'm not trying to troll her. I just wish she didn't wear that. So imagine you're walking around with a wig that looks like that. Then Zari shows up in that beautiful um, blonde wig with that nice headpiece, that very nice decent outfit and all that. Of course, she's going to steal the show unintentionally. I remember when she got into the show, I even posted it on my story saying, oh my goodness, what a queen. Like I was just thinking it must be nice that you can intimidate so many women just by your presence. She didn't do anything. She just showed up. She even remembered to carry a gift. I don't know if Nadia even carried a gift for Diamond. Like Annie at that point, by the way, said, now that is another woman who knows how to treat a man. And I think also for Annie, it's at that Arab night that her problems with Zari started because, um, yeah, like we'll get to that a bit later, but uh, Nadia, that's where the problem started. And throughout the show, she kept avoiding Zari thinking Zari is a ruffler. She didn't get the chance to even call Zari for lunch. You know, you have been forced to be in the same circle. You're filming a show together. You don't necessarily have to be the best of friends, but at least make an effort to try and get to know this person. What I would have done if I was in her shoes is what every other woman in that show did with each other, including Zari and Annie. Call her out for lunch. Try to see who this person is before forming an opinion. Because honestly, people were fighting with Zari. Nadia just heard these stories from other people. She was never there. She never witnessed it. But she formed an opinion. So now what happens if every other person decides to reconcile with Zari? You, what do you do? You look like a stupid one. Because in essence, she did nothing wrong to you. So do you now start getting along with her without addressing the fact that you misjudged her? Or what happens? Because to me, that was the most ridiculous thing ever. You can't hate somebody just because other people hate them and they have done nothing wrong to you. So she should have made an effort, which she didn't. So, yeah. Me, I'm usually told you stay away from such women who inherit enemies every other time with no reason. Like, as in, honestly, there was no reason for Nadia to hate on Zari. And also, look at this. Uh, there was a train incident. She wasn't in the train at all. She wasn't there and she wasn't there intentionally. It's not that she had something else to do, but then she was the first one to talk to Diamond about this train and to talk about Zari in a bad way to Diamond. She wasn't there, but she was the first to tell him about this entire story. He was still in the States. He still hadn't heard about it, but she had to be the first one to say it. Also, after she heard about the train, she knew the entire story. She timed, like she looked for the worst possible scenario. She waited for Annie's bachelorette. Things were perfectly fine. Things were going very well. There was no need to address that. Even Zari went there just saying, you know, I hope this entire thing will just be about Annie. But Nadia had to bring out, uh, she had to bring up that entire story of the train. Sorry to say, but it was very stupid of them to do this at that point. They decided to talk about it. Even Kaylee was shocked that this was even coming up. I mean, it was unnecessary. It was so unnecessary. Like, she is the one who started... They always start fights with Zari, honestly. They always are the ones who start fights. It's not Zari who starts. Zari only reacts in such a strong way. They get intimidated. And then now they start, you know, behaving like high school kids in a clique bullying one woman because they really ganged up on her so many times and i've been clapping for zari ever since because another woman however strong would have probably broken down in such a situation it doesn't feel good when people gang up against you but not once did she break she remained who she thinks she is which is a boss lady and a lot of people around the world i think have seen that she really deserves that title also i don't know why Okay, this I'll address a bit later, but but there's that bit. I also just think, all in all, Nadia was not necessary in this entire series because she did not add any value to the show. 
at first i thought she'd be such a vibe i liked her at first i liked how she entered i loved her friendship with kanye at first but later on i started seeing her as kanye's puppet like that person who just waits for a report of the news and forms her opinion based on what kanye has said because kanye is a strong woman and nadia nadia i just think is wali watua the way zari said it oh so we are fighting fine let me just wear my boots so we can fight together without finding out why we are actually fighting so i'm sorry to say if i if some people love nadia but that's my opinion of what i, I thought she she is and i don't really think i would love to surround myself with such people and then there's kaylee oh my god i thought she was such a sweetheart but let me ask you guys something <laughs> had to check if it's recording again let me ask you guys something did you guys notice that she's the only woman who did not feel intimidated by zari's presence throughout the show i tend to think it's because because me, I saw a lot of similarities between Kaylee and Zari. First of all, they're both gorgeous women. I thought all the women in the show are beautiful, by the way. And I really hate... Um, I've never been that kind of person who will say, Nani is more beautiful than so-and-so, so-and-so is more beautiful than so-and-so. Even though I know they'll always be a prettier girl, they'll always be a more stunning woman and whatnot. But I found myself doing that. I think Kaylee is also very beautiful and I think she's confident. She may not be as loud as Zari and Kanye when it comes to, you know, the confidence bit, but she does have that confidence. And you can tell because when Zari arrived, she didn't look threatened by Zari's presence. She was very okay with Zari. Um, even at the high tea. Because I remember the way Nadia um, at the high tea was saying, oh, I don't like champagne. Just because Zari is the one who'd been told to, you know, grab it, to grab the champagne so they could drink some. Then she says, oh, but I don't like champagne. As in there's a lot of shade and but what i liked is the fact that she at least admitted that zari is a whole lot of woman she said it herself and it's true but kaylee kaylee was always calm she didn't start any fights she didn't side with the wrong person she was always fair the only mistake i think zari did in this entire series was that time when she called two faced to the side and actually called annie insecure in front of her husband but i feel like even that she was triggered to do that and she was also willing to apologize at some point so kaylee saw something wrong in what um zari did uh in that situation but she also saw what kina ani and uh and kani did wrong in the train as in she was a fair girl but i also think that she did some things that were also unnecessary if you ask me for example at the tea party when she was talking about how she and dj naked are not in the you know in in the best of terms why did she have to bring out that entire story of how Diamond has been pursuing Nadia and then at the party, he's ignoring Nadia just because Zari is present there? That was very uncomfortable. I was wondering, why would you bring up such a story? It looks like um, cooking up drama, but I don't think she meant it badly. It's because they asked her why she was arguing with her boyfriend. But I also think Diamond was right in saying, if your girlfriend is arguing with you because of somebody else... Uh, and it's not you who's made that mistake, then there definitely is a problem. I don't think she should have taken it that far. I mean, you can't be concerned uh, with who uh, your boyfriend is hanging around, but but I don't think that was the right place to bring that up. Um, yeah, I really don't think so. But I also really love the fact that she was, a, she was a strong woman, and you can tell because she knew exactly what she wanted from that relationship, and she was even willing to walk away from the relationship in case she did not get what it is that she wanted, which was respect. Now let's talk about Kanye. First of all, let me just say I did not know a lot of these people before the show started. I only knew three people. I got to know Swanky at the start of January, so I can say four people. But I just knew Diamond, Zari, and Annie. And I always looked at Annie as the African queen, but she just embodied the kind of woman that I would never want to be in my entire life, you know, if I'm judging by the series. Maybe other people know her differently from her life elsewhere and the things she does, but I just, I am just basing this on what i watched but anyway we'll get to annie in a while kani kani is a strong woman you can tell she's always so well dressed i could literally i would literally wear everything she wore on that show of course except i wouldn't be as bold you know to wear that much cleavage and maybe skirts that short and whatnot but i loved everything she wore it looked good on her i may be just a bit conservative but I would really wear her clothes. She, she was so well put together. She was so well dressed. Always had the best clothes. Um, she's also very strong. She's very articulate. She was also very fair at the start of the show. I liked her so much. I thought she would be my favorite until the train incident. I have never been so disappointed in a woman like I was in Kanye after that incident. Because I felt like she's the one who started it. And I also felt like she's the one who just... I felt like she's the reason why... Um, Zari ended up not being invited to um, 
to the part to Annie's wedding. It was just all revolving around that entire train thing. Because initially she was the fair person. She had some very good advice for all of her friends. She was always willing to listen to everybody. She is the one who planned a lot of lunches with people just to get to know them. That's why I think that she was the host of the show. I feel like she's the one who knew most of the people in that show. Like she knew most of them. Um she knew Zari because of Ivan Semwanga, who died I think four or five years ago. And she knew she, like if if she knew Ivan, then she's known Zari for a while, which they even stated. I feel like she knows she's a strong woman, she's a powerful woman, she's a beautiful woman. But uh, after the train incident, first of all, I love the way she even had Annie's back talked to Two Face, despite the fact that she knew Two Face had just really hurt this woman. But she was willing to talk to him on behalf of Annie, you know, to vouch for her and to, you know, have her girl's back. She was willing to to help Zari understand where Annie was coming from, and Zari did understand because Zari was always willing to, you know, get together with Annie and talk it out and whatnot, despite the fact that it always ended up badly. I like the fact that she was there to, she was willing to help Naked and Kaylee in their relationship. I like the fact that she was, oh, she looks, you know, she said she was a life coach at first. And I believe her, I believed her for the better part of that series until the train section. And it got me thinking, she's probably that nice to people when she knows you're beneath her. Because let's face it, the only person who, like she was, she and Zari are two strong women. And let's just say she's stronger than a lot of the, the other women there except Zari. So I feel like she'll be nice to you, she'll be that good to you as long as you're not at par with her or above her. But I think she and Zari are just at par with each other. But after the train incident, I'll give Zari like more points. And I think um, she'll be nice to you as long as you're not at the same level with her, because that way you can't butt heads with her. I also felt like Nadia was her puppet. I mean, she controlled Nadia's feelings towards everybody. Um, she's the one who wanted Nadia to, you know, have a thing with Diamond. She's the one, despite knowing what Diamond is like. I mean, she's Diamond's friend and she clearly knew throughout the show that Diamond is a player. Why would you want to hook up your girlfriend with another man, especially if she's dating somebody else, and you want to hook her up with another friend of yours who you know is going to play her? I don't think that's something you're supposed to do to your friends. But regardless, I still loved her until that train incident. In the train incident, when she was saying that Zari felt like she needed to uh, to thrown somebody i felt like she was speaking for herself i think she felt dethroned she felt like the beyonce of the group but here zari was doing same thing she did she threw a ball she gave seven speeches at her ball she invited everyone and everybody came on the other hand zari also threw a party in the most luxurious train in south africa and she was there trying to give a speech just one yeah she gave a lot of speeches at her party zari was the host here she's the one who started this entire thing when zari was trying to speak she's the one who at first had that foul expression on her face and i was wondering what's wrong with this woman and then when annie walked into that train so unexpectedly because she wasn't there from the start um they started gossiping like she'd say something and they're like Psst. and first of all before zari even addressed it i was like i what's wrong with this woman and they're supposed to listen to the host and then she got uh, she got very pissed and she's pissed off because zari is saying thank you where in the world has it been okay for somebody has it been a crime for somebody to say thank you for honoring my invite in short i don't see anything she did that was so wrong she didn't insult anybody she was very happy at the start of that train trip she remained happy up until that part and kanye's facial expression was just terrible and also the fact that she was whispering around with annie was just unnecessary i didn't think that was the time to do that and they were just obviously talking badly about zari i tend to think they were like what oh, does she think she is like, it was so bad. It was distasteful. And I just concluded that this was just because she started feeling like she was the queen of the group. She was the queen of the group. It even looked like that at first because she's the one who would get everybody together. A lot of people would listen to her. But all of a sudden, here's Zari. She has everybody's attention. Um, She has organized this amazing party and whatnot. As in, Kanye felt like she's the only person who had the right to give a speech at her events. I don't think that's right at all. It, it really isn't right. And then you remember the way she was trying to excuse herself and to defend herself when Naked brought it up during the dinner. She was saying, but that was my party. I had the right to make a speech at my ball. It was my my party this is not zari's party and i'm like but zari is the one who actually invited everybody to this entire train ride and after that i just felt like it wasn't like she was just she lost herself in that train and for me that just cancelled out everything that i felt for her i'd put her in a pedestal but to me she just 
she just dropped from that stool that pedestal and then you know i'll give her props for the speech she gave at annie's wedding it was a beautiful speech to give at a friend's party but it doesn't it didn't change the fact that that she just did Zari dirty. Like, it was so bad. Do you know Zari made that one mistake with Two-Face? But because of how they treated Zari throughout the entire series, they made Zari look so good. Like, they made her look like the saint in that entire series. And you know, sometimes when you're trying to make somebody look bad, they end up looking good. Also, when Swanky was having that outburst, imagine she told Zari, actually, we never used to have such arguments before you joined. Now you have joined us, and all of a sudden, we are arguing amongst ourselves and whatnot. You can't do that to somebody. You can't say that to someone who is supposedly supposed to be your friend. Because I thought Kanye and Zari were getting along so well. And I, I feel like... And she was even asking, actually, what was this uh, this speech you're making supposed to help you with? Uh, was it supposed to gratify you in a way or not? And I still... Like, if anybody understands what Zari did wrong in that train, please let me know. Because to this date, I do not understand it. It's also another reason that girl, that uh, Nigerian girl came at me on my Instagram. By the way, people, you should just relax. Don't go after the people who have watched the show. Go after the people who are in the show. Because I would have thought she'd have gone for Zari. And maybe came at Zari there, but she came for me. A person who in this particular case is very insignificant because I only watched it. I wasn't in the show. But yeah, I said what I said. I think Kanye just really, she really just fell off the pedestal that a lot of us had put her on. And they made Zari look even better. I personally felt like they formed a clique that looks like a high school bullying clique where they were mere one girl. Like they just all come together against that one girl. And it wasn't nice. But then uh, let's speak about Annie and Zari, who I think, I mean, without them, this show wouldn't have been the way it was also because they argued a lot and there's a whole reason why. Uh, Annie and Zari are two women who have suffered the same fate. They have dated superstars. Um, in Annie's case, she's even married that superstar that she dated. They have been cheated on. They have had the same the same same um situation but the difference is in the way they handled it annie is too vulnerable and is too obsessed with innocent i.e too baba that she cannot picture her life without him uh, as a result she has just remained under his shadow she has her own achievements she said her name is annie macaulay and you will know about her let me tell you something. When I went into this show, I had a very open mind. I didn't know a lot of the cast members. I only just knew Zari calls herself the boss lady and Annie calls herself the African queen. I never doubted any of them for calling themselves that. So I was just happy, very excited. In fact, I see Annie's comments on Diamond's posts and I always thought, oh, I will love her because she loves this superstar, blah, blah, blah. So I thought I was going to love her so much because I was willing to see how different she is and what else she does with her life except being Two-Faced Dibia's wife. But just five minutes into her entry, her entrance into that series, she only depicted the image of Two-Faced Dibia's wife. I didn't get to see uh, Annie, the African queen. I didn't get to see Annie, this woman who supposedly has acted in over 200 movies and 16 series. I don't remember her in any of the Nigerian films I've watched, and God knows I watched a lot of them growing up. It's basically the only thing we watched on TV for the most part, alongside Mexican soaps when we were growing up, but I'm not doubting that she has acted. I just wanted to really see her in that light, but I ended up just seeing her as let me tell you, let me put it straight. She embodied the kind of woman that I would never ever want to be in my entire life. She was insecure. She was broken. She was not just hurt. She was broken. And I think um, her self-worth has been affected so much by what her husband has done to her. Zari embodied the kind of woman that I would want to be on any given day. She was strong. Guys, they ganged up on her on so many occasions, but she did not break up. Uh, like, she did not break down even once. She did not allow her confidence to be, you know, reduced or minimized. She didn't feel small in front of all of those women when they ganged up against her. She did not need anyone to defend her. And she maintained grace throughout the entire show, like even when they attacked her. And that is the kind of woman who I need to, like, remember every other time. Because while Annie decided to stay with the guy who continuously cheats on her, Zari walked away and it's not even with her relationship with Diamond alone her relationship with Ivan if you've had the story he was abusive he abused her so many times like physically abusive because she was stunning obviously she's very stunning and she'd get a lot of attention from men like every time they'd walk out go somewhere nini, and he was getting jealous and jealous and he started beating her up but you see it's not her fault she's stunning right so that's that really like it really 
hit me that that is the kind of woman who we should strive to be like we should strive to be that like zari i she is an example to be followed now annie the way she walked into that show she was very judgmental first of all i didn't like the way she was invited to nadia uh, to to kanye's um to kanye's ball and then she shows up and then she starts by saying, it wasn't what I expected it to be. I thought because they call her the queen of bling, they, uh, it was going to be extravagant. It was going to be like this and like that. And I'm like, ah, just go to the party and enjoy it. Because that was a nice party. Maybe I'm looking at it because I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a common one, auntie. I'm not a billionaire, but every other person um, liked it. So I don't know why she had to start saying it wasn't what she expected. Then I thought that was enough only for her to sit down and say she hated the food, the steak looked and cooked. And then um, Nadia tells her, just wash it off with the, the champagne. And she's like, uh, the champagne is flat. I'm like, what is wrong with this woman? I'm like, I seriously, are you not going to come to somebody's party and start talking like that? And then shortly after, she asks uh, about people and their situation with kids. And then um, Kanye says that she has, that, that her child has an apartment next door. I mean, normally it would be very odd for a 15 year old child to live alone. But to me, in this particular situation, I didn't see anything wrong with the way Kanye is raising her kids because Kanye, her daughter is just next door. It's like your daughter having, like you having a big house and your daughter having a big bedroom. Like it's just next door. It's not like she lives in a different building. I mean, she lives in a different house house or something of the sort i personally didn't see anything wrong with it in fact i was shocked that annie who said she started dating two-faced at 15 or 16 would be the one to start judging a woman because this 15 year old girl is living by herself she is just next door while kanye was actually right in confronting her about the situation and reminding her that you have left your kids in lagos nigeria to come to south africa to follow your dream my child is just next door so between the two of us who's the bad mother i actually sided with kanye on that if the child was living in a different uh building i'd have a problem if the child was living in a different floor i'd have a problem but the child lives right next door so she's able to keep an eye on her child in fact they even showed her leaving her apartment to go to her daughter's apartment it's literally just a short distance it's right next door so i think annie was just being too judgmental and you're not supposed to judge um you're not supposed to judge somebody's motherhood skills like that but then also i didn't like annie in that at first when zari arrived at that party she was very impressed by zari she even said now that's another woman who knows how to treat a man because she even because zari came with a gift and you know zari was like her presence made Diamond happy and she was happy for the most part until Two-Face called. When Two-Face called, she was extremely happy. She was like a teenager who had just received a call from her crush. Now, initially, I thought it was cute and nice, but as the series progressed, I started looking back and thinking maybe she was just that excited because she, she kept thinking what is my husband doing in my absence what is my husband doing because remember when the series started swanky was laughing at her because the last person she actually googled is her husband why would you keep googling your, it's like stalking your husband just to give yourself comfort that he's not with another woman ama they're not written that they're found him with another woman so when he called it was like oh my god thank god he's called me because I, I i was starting to you know ask myself what he's doing at this moment everybody was shocked when um swanky uh, i think swanky shouldn't have said that in front of everybody but she just revealed that the last person she had actually talked to uh, she had actually googled was her husband anyway two face spoke to everybody but he was particularly excited to talk to zari and i think it was very innocent because um at some point when when you see somebody you haven't seen in a while that you did something significant with in this case it was a channel or something that he did with zari years back you get excited because you relieve that moment because you know good times so she annie herself said that two-face has sent me three messages saying send a special bless up to zari the boss lady and i think this triggered her because she started wondering how did you know my husband now there's a way you can ask how, how somebody knows your husband without sounding like you're being territorial but i think because he's been cheating around so much it shocked her that this woman who she was saying knows how to treat a man suddenly knows the husband and the husband is sending a special bless up to zari the boss lady if you want to know annie is insecure why didn't diamond have a problem with that 
why didn't anybody see the problem with you know two face saying a special shout out to to you know Zari the boss lady after speaking to everybody else because it was two face who did that and at least that's what i saw um cuz Ali said it herself if you watch it very well she said it herself that hey um you know bless up to Zare the boss lady and so now it became a whole issue and even at tea time Annie was there complaining and Zare said her bum was out but to be quite honest when she arrived even me was thinking gosh how is she going to sit in this dress because you know the setup was on the floor her dress was extremely short maybe Zare should have told her in a different way but the thing is she picked like she she took too much offense in something so small if she herself was okay with how she was dressed up i don't think it would have it was supposed to trigger such you know to trigger such animosity I, I, it just wasn't right but then also much later um when it when it came to that issue of uh keeping like she kept on asking you know Zari says Annie kept on asking how she knows her husband and i think it's irritating you'd only understand Zari if you've been in such a situation i think sometimes women do things very unnecessarily i understood Zari's situation it gets annoying when somebody's starting to ask you how do you know my husband like there's a way you can ask somebody oh nice i didn't even know he knew you how have you guys known each other i just felt the insecurity from Annie's part and um i felt like when Annie who had been crying so hard like she had cried and cried and cried then suddenly she's so happy at they are renewing the vows to me it sounded so silly i think to everybody it sounded silly especially to kani and zari because you can't be crying one minute over your serial cheater of a husband and then the next minute you are just there talking about how you're getting married you, you're renewing your vows and you know all of a sudden very happy and they did try to talk to her about this like both of them um of course, Kanye had a better way of approaching it, but Zari not so good because they already had friction. Even at that uh, at that party where you call um, Two Face to the side, it was terribly wrong. But um, I don't think I think it was triggered by Annie's constant asking of questions, and I feel like in retaliation she felt like, okay, fine, now let me show you what it is that you don't want to see. And I think it was so wrong for her to to call her insecure right in front of her husband. But you see, she was willing to apologize. She was willing to apologize for that and to tell her how she actually knows her husband. And but it was such a small thing. They just did the channel low thing together. Such a small thing. And she was going to tell her that. Like, I could see it. But now you see when they both met up for that lunch they're supposed to have, Annie came with the spirit of a fighter. You know, this is my husband. You're not supposed to talk to him like that. You're not supposed to even say this, 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 this. And you know, she kept on going and going and going and going and going. Of course, Zari, being the strong lady that she is, was not just going to sit there and allow somebody to, you know, to scream in her face and bully her. So even now she had to fight back. Because now Annie, even to me, was getting a bit insolent. Now she's starting to to be a bit too much. And Zari tells her, you know, you're very insecure. And that's why you think that it is just a good idea for us to sit here and discuss this ridiculous thing. But then she argued like a true East African girl. Because that's what I would tell somebody. Well, oh, you're so insecure. And now that's why you think I have all the time in the world to sit here and listen to your nonsense. That's what I would tell somebody if they were bringing me nonsense as well. So she argued like a true East African girl. Like the Ugandan in her really came out um, in this scene. And you know, in as much as she had done something wrong, uh, calling two face to the side i feel like this particular scene made her look so good it made uh, it made annie look like the, the villain like completely from this episode to i think the last one if you ask me because it wasn't necessary i think if they had gone for a lunch annie should have just told her what she had and then listened to zari's side and they'd have come up uh, with they'd have come to an understanding and i feel like zari kept apologizing throughout the entire show and she'd have easily apologized even in this situation even swanky at some point told annie i feel like she'd have actually told you where she knew innocent from and she'd have actually apologized for this so maybe it was a misunderstanding no it wasn't annie just went there with the spirit of a fighter to tell her i am the married one and you are the baby mama to diamond platinum's kids because that's what she kept saying diamond platinum's is your baby daddy Innocent is my husband. And that's why Zari told her, um, I won't repeat her exact words only because I cannot swear. Like for the life of me, I have never, I can't say those words, but I can replace that with another word. I'll use the word shame. She's like, shame on you and your silly marriage. I am a billionaire. I don't need to secure a man. When she said that statement, I, re I had to rewind to listen to it again because she had me there. I was like, yes, girl. Yes.
you do not need to secure a man you are okay on your own like that as in i'm a billionaire i do not need to secure a man i repeated that part so many times and she even said if you were not so insecure if your husband wasn't cheating around with everybody you wouldn't be here insecure about any woman that happens to know your husband and she was right in saying that the audacity that annie had at that moment like you know she had been offended yes but the way she approached the situation was just terrible. You don't approach a situation like that, especially if you want to get your message across. And I think it was very, it was uncool for Annie to do that. Um, it was from that moment on that I just, I kept just seeing. But innocent, two-faced Edibia. In fact, I, I can't believe your name is actually innocent. But as in, it's your fault that your wife is behaving like this towards other women. Period. It's all your fault. But anyway, I think Annie just has insecurity issues. I hope for the life of her, she actually seeks a therapist. Now, after that entire scene, I mean, I think, I tend to think Annie thinks of herself as the ride or die kind of wife, but I don't. I just think she is dying in that ride. She's not a ride or die kind of chick. She is the dying chick in the ride because it's too obvious that she needs help. I liked that she was so real in the entire series. It's just that her realness is very... It's something that we, you just look at and you just feel pity for. Because wow, she is broken. She is tormented. She is tormented. I mean, I will say she, I admire the way she looks at, like the way she looks after her children. I did like the story about her child being a survivor of that disease. Um, That disease that's called, I don't know, but she said it makes people walk like this. Like it's very inspiring Um, what she shared about her child. I like the way she loves her children. But I just feel like she's too obsessed with her marriage for her to even see in an objective way. She's too obsessed with her marriage. I also felt like it just wasn't nice that she... What she did in the train with Kanye wasn't nice, but it was expected of her. I mean, she's Annie. She hated Zari right from like the start. Also, that time when, uh, when Swanky organized a nice lunch for the three of them so that they could sort out their issues with Zari, she did not go there with an open mind. Zari went there even with flowers. She went there to apologize. But Annie got there and started using her phone the entire time. And again, she didn't even let Zari finish saying what she was saying. She just kept saying, it's okay, Zari. It's okay. It's And then on the side, she says she didn't mean it. I actually think Zari meant that apology. I think she just wanted things to move on smoothly. And that's even why she invited invited Annie to that train which she showed up at but I just really wish she hadn't I think Annie is just I think she's too hurt that she projects what she's feeling inside to other people and I don't think that's fair I don't think if you're insecure because of your husband you should now start bashing other women and making them feel like they're small just because maybe they're not married or just they're just baby mamas I don't think it was nice I also think there's a better way of asking somebody how they know your husband without mentioning your husband. Because the moment you mention that, you make it look so bad. You make it look terrible. So I really, I really wouldn't want to be like Annie at all. But I really hope for her sake that the next 10 years of her renewed vows are actually going to be... And you know, by the way, she did even say in front of the children. Talk about people talking at in front of people. She was upset at Izari called Two-Face and called her this in front of, you know, her um and called her you know in uh, insecure in front of him but she also asked her husband to promise her that there won't be any cheating in front of her two children so which is worse as in she she asked her husband just give me one more promise that you won't cheat on me and the husband goes like what is cheating but i don't think she should have brought that up in front of the kids and you know it worries me a bit that um i think she's a very good mother but it worries me that her kids, her daughters, two girls, because she happens to have girls, have been raised in an environment where they now, they'll get to a point where they'll understand what their father has done. And, you know, it can, you always mirror the relationship you have seen with your par like between your parents. You can be either exactly that or completely opposite. I fear that, you know, there's a, there's a chance that her daughters will be opposite. They'll be like, my mother had to go through this. I would never want to be through the, like to go through the same so i'll be a stronger woman or they could be like well my mother endured it so maybe i should also endure this kind of treatment from a man so i'm really worried but that said i think she has very cute children especially the youngest oh my gosh that child is beautiful i mean i'm not saying the first one isn't but this one she's so cute she's so nice and chubby she just has the best eyes she has a beautiful like she has nice cheeks and all that i think she has beautiful 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 kids and i think i also really loved her friend the white girl uh she was so 
she's so nice she even prayed for her at her renewed vows and i think she looked very um and looked very beautiful on her wedding day um zari now to just close my review of this entire show zari was everything i think she was very confident and i was even wondering do they just teach us this in east africa and west african girls don't get uh, taught that in south african girls because zari said i am way up here so instead of bringing me down why don't you pull up your socks so that you can get here to the same level as me this is something i have been taught over and over in my life i have been taught that if you're here you should never lower your standards just to make people comfortable instead it's up to them to pull up their socks and if they don't want to pull up their socks it's on them it's not my fault in any way and when zari said that i clapped for her because this is something that i have been taught over and over even me and i have stuck by it and i felt like she needed to say that i, I like i am so glad she did not lower her guard lower her confidence lower her self-esteem i'm glad that she was willing to uh, to apologize whenever she felt like she had done something wrong maybe by any chance and i love the fact that she didn't apologize for the train incident because she didn't do anything wrong in the train incident and i think kanye was just too rude to her but she held on so well she didn't cry she didn't break down she was perfectly okay even when swanky was having this outburst she remained very cool calm and collected and i love the fact that she said the problem is her like she is zari the boss lady her energy is strong and they're feeling the energy and because of that well that's on them i mean it's on them if they're feeling that energy i don't think she had to apologize and i'm so glad she did not apologize for it and i think they made her look like the saint in this entire story despite her shortcomings as a person because everybody has their own shortcomings i feel like she handled herself so well i love the fact that she always complimented everybody Zari is the only person who told people that they look beautiful every other time. When the, when uh, that first scene when Kanye um when Kanye met up with Zari uh when they were having drinks. Remember how Zari started by saying, "Oh, you look so beautiful. I like that, you know, bold look." And Zari looked very nice herself in that mustard jumpsuit. But Kanye didn't say anything. Again, when they met up uh, to discuss what had happened in that voice note that she left, Zari looked gorgeous. She was the first to tell Kanye, oh, you look so beautiful. Kanye didn't say anything back. She's like, ah, I like to pull out, you know, uh, a nice power suit every once in a while. I'm like, something of the sort. And then also at that party when she showed up at Diamond's party, she was definitely the most stunning. But she was so quick. To compliment nadia she told nadia you look beautiful and then he was like you too but nadia just she said it's such mother row and then also when they were having the high tea she was the best dressed she looked so beautiful with her hair and that fascinator she had the pink fascinator and when annie was approaching she's like oh look who's here the fabulous the glamorous i don't know what word she used if it was fabulous or glamorous but she complimented annie I think like I, I feel like she was the one who was giving out compliments despite the fact that she was the most beautiful she was very stunning and zari looks like a boss lady in every sense of the word even her dressing she's always very even when you look at her instagram she's always so decently dressed and in cases where she has to show skin she's uh, she shows it very tastefully like her belly is always out so nicely um like even in that party that she attended the swanky's party in nigeria she was wearing a sheer dress but it was so tasteful it looked nice and for that i'll applaud her i was also really love that part when she was selling Kanye. Men are just like, you know, like that glass of champagne. It has cherries inside, but they can still have the champagne without the cherries. That to me was everything. Everything. Like, I love that line. It's nice. And then you remember the way Annie was even saying, telling her husband that she ha he has been very careless with her. So I hope he won't be careless with me anymore. And this triggered Zari. And I think Zari was intrigued by Annie, but I also think she was concerned for Annie. I, I really think that because even me, I was concerned when she said, Ati, you know, you've been very careless with me in front of everybody. I don't know why she was so mad that Zari did that to her in front of everyone, but even she somehow embarrassed her husband in front of everyone. He deserves to be embarrassed, but well, I don't know why she was so upset. And then I also remember when Zari said, um, when, you know, they were telling Zari about diamond dating other women and why diamond is so hooked up on her and she said that's not her problem it's the next woman's problem i was like yes 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 queen zari to me is a queen she carried the entire show and i loved her scenes with andy lee so much the way she'd hug him and be like mm, that is so good i feel like she enjoyed the flirtatious behavior of andy lee i i think she really enjoyed it because everyone loves the man who makes them feel good andy lee was always 
complimenting her, telling her how beautiful she looked. And I also like the fact that she reminded Annie that when the men are cheating, they cheat with the opposite type. So don't be too confident at ease. You know, Annie was saying she's a pretty girl regardless. And I'm like, hmm, Annie, you know she's not just pretty. She is a stunningly beautiful woman. Like, she is stunning. Her appearance is a showstopper. So I think, I think all in all, she carried the show. And um, I think she carried the show. And I will applaud her for that. I can't wait for season two. I've never waited for a show, uh, you know, for a second season of a show to come so much like I have for this one. And uh, again, shout out to everybody who's in that show. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought about my review of this show. I'm so sure this is the longest video I've ever put out. I could not rest until, you know, I filmed this today. Today is Sunday. And I will post it probably tomorrow or on Tuesday because I have to edit it. But um, yeah, so I stick by my words, Andy Lee. Diamond and Zari to me were everything in this show and I appreciate everybody else and I especially appreciate DJ Naked and um, Kaylee for being very fair throughout the entire show. Um, I appreciate all of them for actually doing a good job because again it was a team effort to just make this show what it was including Annie and including Two Face because again they did show us the kind of relationship that we'd want to have and Naked and Kaylee showed up the kind of relationship that we sh we'd like to have a relationship where we can work through, through the problems. I hope Annie has a good 10 years and they renew their vows again after now, you know, it's been 20 years. I hope she does not face what she has faced in the initial stages of their relationship. But then, again, that's for her to handle. Yes, so that is what I thought about the series. I still think Akwaze should have been there or Embare or Huda. Uh, I feel like Zari handled herself so well and I cannot wait for part two to see if this feud between the ladies actually continues or it stops because it, it, it has to stop. Of course, we enjoy the drama because we are viewing it. But um, honestly, from a woman's point of view, you cannot be grown women and you behave like that. So I'm very excited for that. And I also feel like Aki, these women need to fix their wigs. You know when Kanye was being very mean to Zari, her wig had actually, like, it's little to the back. And I, I'm always thinking, like, I was like, oh my goodness. If you're going to be mean to someone, at least make sure you look your best when you're doing it. Because otherwise, you just look ridiculous. Like, Kanye attacking Zari after the game ride, uh, after the game ride, that was one of the worst things I've ever seen somebody do to somebody. Um, it was like a war, but you know what? She, she by she, I mean uh, Zari handled it very well. And I, and kudos to Kaylee. And well, I've already mentioned all this within the video. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.